A gory discovery in a medieval house is thought to possibly solve the mystery of Sir Walter Raleigh's severed head. There are times in life in which unexpected things happen. People all over the world encounter themselves in situations that they never plan. Of course, we don't often think something out of the ordinary could have a drastic effect in how things turn in the future. At most, we think we have to adapt to one or two small changes. However, there are times when unexpected situations result in unexpected turns in the future. And for a man once known as a familiar figure on British television, the decision of inviting an expert on historical costumes to an old mansion he had just inherited led to possibly solve what has been a mystery for hundreds of years. Bamber Gascoigne is a former British television presenter and book author who in 2014 inherited a 50-room mansion left by his elderly aunt. Instead, the gorgeous but yet crumbling property, there were all kinds of stuff with an immense monetary value. One day, the presenter decided to invite Mark Wallace, an expert on historical costumes, to pay him a visit. Together, they walked all over the mansion and talked for hours about the things there were in there. However, there was one particular item Mr. Gascoigne was interested about a red velvet bag that he showed Mr. Wallace in order to examine. The expert was astonished by the item, so he went on to examine it and told Mr. Gascoigne he believed it dated from the 17th century. In fact, he had the feeling it might once have belonged to the wife of Sir Walter Raleigh, a man who in life accomplished many achievements. Now before we jump into the story, here's a bit of background information on Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh was an English landed gentleman who was born sometime around 1552 in a farmhouse called Hayes Barton in England. He was the son of Walter Raleigh and Catherine Champernown, both staunch Protestants. Back then, being a Protestant was a dangerous thing since Catholic Mary I of England was on the throne. However, Time later, things took a turn when Protestant Elizabeth I became queen in 1558. About 11 years later, in 1569, Raleigh, who was only a teenager at the time, joined the Protestant Huguenot forces battle against Roman Catholic armies in France. For some time, he was part of the blood war of religions. Eventually, he decided to return and spend some years studying. In 1572, he attended Oriel College at Oxford University. And three years later, Raleigh was a law student at the Middle Temple in London. Nevertheless, the first decades of his life, Sir Raleigh chose the transition from studying to going to battle. And so in 1579, he returned to the battlefield, this time helping to suppress a rebellion in the Irish province of Munster. During the following year, he was head of a detachment of soldiers to whom he ordered to capture as many Italian and Spanish papal troops and beheaded them to make them suffer. Such a brutal action was well rewarded by Queen Elizabeth, who not only gave him some 4,000 acres of land in Munster, but also gave him various trading licenses and knighted him in 1585. Being now in his 30s, Sir Walter had a good life. However, he made a fatal mistake when in 1591 he secretly married one of Queen Elizabeth's courtiers. The woman named Elizabeth Throckmorton was expecting a child when they both decided to get married. Unfortunately, due to the plague, the baby boy passed away not long after his birth. The Queen found out about the marriage and she consigned the couple to the Tower of London. It took about two years for Queen Elizabeth to forgive Raleigh for his transgression. However, there were many other people that were not happy with how he was treated by the royalty. So in 1603, when his patron Queen Elizabeth passed away, Raleigh's luck came to an end. He was taken into custody soon after and accused of treason. For the next 13 years, he spent his life locked down in a tower until he could finally escape with his wife. Eventually, he was pardoned by King James, who gave him the mission of traveling to the New World and attempting to find the riches of El Dorado. However, there were clear instructions of what not to do when doing that trip. Sir Raleigh was not to attack Spanish ships or settlements due to a peace treaty that King James had made with Spain. 
Unfortunately, some of Raleigh's men defied his orders and went on to attack a Spanish settlement. As a result, Raleigh lost his son and was condemned to lose his life due to the unfortunate events. On October 29, 1618, he was taken to the yard of the Palace of Westminster, where he met his end after having his head chopped off. According to Raleigh Trevelyan's 2002 biography of Sir Walter Raleigh, his last words addressed to his executioner as the axe was poised above his neck were, Strike, man, strike! Just like that, the man once knighted by the queen lost his life at the age of 66. Afterward, Raleigh's head was embalmed and placed in a bag that was claimed by his wife Elizabeth. Historians believe she had such a macabre memento of her husband close by her for the rest of her life. Now, here's what's interesting. The mansion inherited by the former British television presenter, Bamber Gascoigne, once belonged to one of the sons of Sir Walter Raleigh and his wife. To make things even more intriguing, it's believed Lady Raleigh lived in that mansion with her son after her husband died. Not only that, but it is also believed that the red velvet bag found inside the property could, in fact, be the same bag where the severed head of the deceased knight was stored for some time. For years, people all over the world have wondered the whereabouts of Sir Raleigh's severed head, and the bag found in the 50-room mansion could be the beginning to get more answers that could solve the mystery once and for all. <laughs>